all right so it's time to talk about yeast artificial chromosome or yac also known as yak or yak vector so what is yak vector or yac vector remember we have been discussing about the different types of vectors used in the molecular cloning used in the expression so either expression vector or cloning vector so most of the vector that we've discussed till now they are of prokaryotic origin so the vector is either plasmid or either from the virus phage linked to plasmid that is cosmid so those kind of vectors but yak or yeast artificial chromosome is a kind of a vector which is actually originated uh, from eukaryotic cell so it, it has a eukaryotic origin yak or yeast artificial chromosome as the name suggests uh, the origin is yeast and uh, it is artificial chromosome for the yeast this is a linear linear vector but it can be circular it can be made circular okay but it's primarily a linear vector that we know and this vector is composed of uh, telomeres centromeres okay so telomere sequences are there centromere is there all the sequences are present in this yak vector so let's talk about the yeast artificial chromosome it's an engineered dna to clone larger dna fragment when we deal with eukaryotic dna as a target dna and let's say we are, we are cloning huge a lengthy eukaryotic dna in that case we need a vector which has higher carrying capacity carrying capacity for in this sense is higher insert size capability and this yeast artificial chromosome has a bigger uh, size capability to contain insert okay so it can clone the dna in the yeast cell so the host in this case is the yeast cell most of the other vectors like plasmid like uh, phage vector the host is bacteria plasmid the host is bacteria but in yeast artificial chromosome the host is yeast that is eukaryotic organism the insert size is 200 kb to 2000 kb in length what are the components of yeast artificial chromosome centromere is present there telomeres are present and ars autonomous replicating sequence are present there centromeres telomeres and autonomous replicating sequences these three components are present apart from that there is the origin of replication from bacterial origin is also present so there are these two different replication origin present one is this ars autonomous replication region another one is origin of replication from bacterial origin because this is artificial chromosome this particular vector can be maintained in bacteria as well as it can be maintained in the yeast the host cell is although in this case is the yeast but we can still maintain that in the bacteria for checking that's why we have origin of replication in bacteria this is how it looks like where you can see the details okay see this is the circular structure this is what we have centromere and then uh, we have this telomere regions two telomere and in the between we have a restriction endonuclease site that is bam h1 site and this is the origin bacterial origin and uh, this is a selectable marker that is present in somewhere uh, else between the centromere and the telomere we have this eco r1 cleavage site and selectable markers where basically the selectable markers are used to screen the recombinant plasmid from the non-recombinant ones so this is the overall look now the thing is if we treat if we treat this circular uh, structure of this yeast artificial chromosome the circular chromosome and if we treat it with BAM H1, it will cleave it from center. So as it cleaves it from center, it will generate, uh, it will, it will, it will be positioning telomeres in the two opposite pole, and the centromere will be present completely in the center. And in between, we have this two different places known as AB resistant places. Okay. So what is the construction of yeast artificial chromosome? We can clearly see this again the construct origin of replication. We have centromere right next to each other. We have selectable marker, different selectable marker, selectable marker A and selectable marker B. And we have telomeres present. And right next to the telomere, we have the BAM H1 sites. So basically, we use BAM H1 and two sites are present near or next to two telomere. It will cleave a segment of this artificial chromosome out. That uh, So this segment is out. And the rest of the segment will have telomeres in the opposite pole. We have centromere, centromere at the end. Uh, uh, sorry centromere at the center at the middle two telomeres at the end and we have this uh, selectable marker b selectable marker a in their position and now if we treat the second restriction endonuclease that is eco r1 from that site eco r1 will cleave right next to the centromere from the clockwise direction so it will cleave it from here from from this portion so what we'll have here 
a single telomere with selectable marker B with centromere in the left hand side and a selectable marker A with telomere in the right hand side. Now this is the cleavage after the eco R1. Now we can attach a target, a target DNA of our interest. So DNA which is eukaryotic gene, generally lengthier gene, eukaryotic gene, eukaryotic DNA segment is added. This shaded orange color se segment is added, it is attached and uh, once the attachment is done then transformation is also performed transformation is done enzyme enzymatic uh, digestion of the cell wall for the yeast cell is done and then we transfer this uh, modified yeast artificial chromosome or modified yak inside of the uh, yeast cell and we call it spheroplast yeast spheroplast once we move it transfer it then we can select either uh, the fragment based on selectable marker A or selectable marker B. We can select whether the we, the selection can be done based on the sele presence of selectable marker A or selectable marker B. Again in this case the selectable marker can be antibiotic resistance gene. We can easily use either an antibiotic resistance for example ampicillin resistance or tetracycline resistance. Based on that we can find out, we can siphon out the target, uh, target cell with this Mm, recombinant yeast artificial uh, chromosome or without the yeast artificial chromosome we can do that okay so that is how we can construct the library the gene library with the help of yeast artificial chromosome and we generally use lengthier dna to be cloned utilizing yeast artificial chromosome because it has larger insert size remember the insert size possibility is 200 k kilo basis to 2000 uh, kilo basis which is plenty of bigger size where a plasmid nearly lasts for 15 kilo basis a yeast artificial chromosome goes for 200 kilo basis to 2000 kilo basis okay and again it's a linear form it can be present in linear form as well as in the circular form okay cyclical form and the advantage is that it can be maintained in eukaryotic cell that is inside the yeast cell so for a larger gene cloning we can utilize yeast artificial chromosome that's the advantage of yeast artificial chromosome because in some cases the yeast artificial chromosome is the only option to clone larger fragment of DNA due to the insert size. But the difficulty arises that uh, the clone of larger or bigger element is sometimes problematic. And also uh, for yeast artificial chromosome as it carries a lengthier uh, DNA, we need to maintain eukaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell culture is tedious to maintain and more laborsome to maintain compared to the uh, bacterial culture. So that's one disadvantage. But yeast artificial chromosome utilizing yak is the only way to go for lengthier DNA cloning. So that's all about East Artificial Chromosome. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.